David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with a very special fountain pen review. What I have for you today is one of the most eagerly awaited pens to hit the market in quite some time. And that pen is the Platinum Curados, Platinum's new retractable nib offering. It caused quite a stir back when images of it were released a while back, and folks were wondering if Platinum had a pen which could compete with the Pilot Vanishing Point at about half of the price. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons, show how it stands up to the pilot vanishing point, and provide a writing sample. Uh, this review is going to be a bit longer than normal, but there is a large number of things to go over with this pen. Thanks go out to Lemur Inc. for providing this pen on loan for review. Now, the specific pen I have for you today is one of the original demo models that were sent out to US retailers, and it's believed that these models are going to be identical to the ones that finally hit the US market. Uh, the Curados is currently available for purchase in Japan, but the release has been delayed for the US until about mid-April. Um, I've heard whispers that this is due to an issue with packaging. Uh, while the pens are manufactured in Japan, the packaging uh, possibly is made in another area of Asia, which is having some significant issues right now with a certain virus which shall not be named. Uh, if this is indeed the issue, I hope things settle down in a bit or very quickly, uh, not just for the sake of a pen, but I think the world is ready for this pandemic to be over. Uh, unfortunately, I have a suspicion that things are going to get worse, especially here in the US, before they get better. Um, I was supposed to be traveling to Atlanta next week on business, and my company has put a halt to virtually all work travel for the next two months, uh, as well as many other companies have done as well. Uh, for everyone's sake, I hope this thing runs its course soon. Okay. Back to the pen. Uh, the Curados will actually be available in four different transparent colors. There is the Prism Crystal, Graphite Smoke, Urban Green, Abyss Blue, and the Grand Red. If you couldn't tell from the intro to this review, the one we will be taking a closer look at today is the Graphite Smoke. Uh, it is mainly constructed with injection molded plastic. Uh, the Curados name is actually a coined term created by combining the Japanese word referring to the extending of the pen tip, Curadasu, and the English word for curiosity. Now, there's a lot going on with this pen, and I think the best way to go over a number of features of this pen is to demonstrate them to you in action, rather than just talking about it and showing pictures. So, in order to get a closer look at this highly anticipated pen and to see if it lives up to expectations, please join me over here at camera two. This pen arrives with this helpful instruction manual. Um, the instruction manual for most pens are disposable, but I do find that there are some very helpful illustrations in this one uh, regarding two main things, mainly changing the ink as well as removing the clip, which we'll actually talk about later, but uh, I wouldn't throw this manual away. There's some very helpful information in here. Here is the pen, the Platinum Curados. Uh, the distinguishing feature of the Curados is the retractable nib, which we'll be taking a close-up look at here in a minute. The pen is made from resin. Now, I have heard others with the opinion that this plastic feels a bit on the cheap side, but I really don't agree with that. I think it feels fine. There is a great deal going on inside the pen, so that helps add some heft to it. Let me go ahead and grab my scale. The Curados comes in at 26 grams. Uh, now here is a vanishing point uh, that there's gonna be a number of comparisons to the vanishing point throughout this review, so I might as well weigh this as well. The vanishing point comes in at 30 grams. Uh, even though the pen is physically smaller, it does contain more metal than the Curados. Uh, in regard to measurements, this pen comes in at, let's see here, the width of it is basically 13 and a half millimeters and the total length, see if we can actually get this within the whole screen. Here, we'll at least see it. It's 153.09 compared to the vanishing point, which at its length is at 140.6. 
So the key feature of the Curados is the retractable nib. You have a rather prominent knock that when depressed will extend the nib. Now this knock is huge. Uh, I wish it was a bit shorter. Uh, you can see here compared to the vanishing point uh, that it's almost twice as long. Now when you depress the knock, it just requires a bit more travel than you'd think it should. Uh, the mechanism has worked just fine for me. Uh, while the knock doesn't require an overabundance of effort in order to operate, it's just the physical distance that you need to depress it seems like a bit much, as opposed to something like the vanishing point, which just seems a little bit shorter. I like that this pen is translucent. Uh, I'll open it up here in a bit, but it's nice to see all of the inner workings. Plus, I think it would have looked very much like a Lamy Pico with a rather hot dog shaped barrel if this was a solid color. On the barrel, it has the name of the pen, the Curados. And then there is a rounded silver ring, which separates the two halves of the pen body. Uh, and then right below the ring here, it says platinum made in Japan. Then we have this rather unique clip. Uh, it's a bit on the short side, but it functions very well. One of the issues some users have with the vanishing point is the placement of the clip. They feel like they have to alter their grip in order to work around the clip. Now, personally, I don't feel that way. My natural grip works very well with the VP and I don't have any issues. I have a friend who will actually perform clipectomies on vanishing points, removing the clip. Now, Platinum has addressed those potential concerns with the Curados by allowing the clip to be easily removed. Uh, they include this little tool right here, and you could use this to remove the clip. And all you do in order to do so is you place this right here, and it goes underneath, and the clip is removed. Uh, now, I would imagine uh, a user would have a personal preference uh, in regard to having this pen either with or without a clip, and they'll keep it that way. I don't think people are going to be taking the clips off and on. Uh, the odd thing is that when you remove the clip, you still have this little raised portion right here that you can see. Uh, and that if you're someone who prefers to remove the clip, you're most likely someone who prefers this portion of the barrel right here to be smooth and round and devoid of any protrusions. So having this little piece stick out like this kind of defeats the purpose of being able to remove the clip. Uh, but I will give Pat Platinum credit for giving users the option to somewhat customize this pen to their individual tastes. It's a little more challenging to get the clip back on. You put it on like this, where it is just in back of these little nibs here, and then you put the tool back on and push it forward. And there we go. The clip is back on the pen. Uh, okay. Now we have the business end of the pen. When you depress the knock, uh, what will happen is you extend the stainless steel nib. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, and medium. Uh, while the nib is on the small and the thin side, it is actually significantly larger than what is found on the vanishing point, as you can see right here. Uh, that, you know, you can see here, while I've been using the Curados, I've been experiencing a bit of nib creep. Uh, now that might be a feature of just this specific pen, but I have found that this particular nib uh, does have a fair amount of creep to it. So your creep mileage may vary. And then here is a look at the plastic feet. I thought this was interesting. If you look at this pen from the side here, this gray piece, the door housing, isn't stationary. It travels a bit down the inside until it gets to the point where the door will open. It's a bit of a fascinating design. So you can see it starts a little bit further back, and when you depress it, it moves forward. Now, the one feature of this pen which I feel would be the most polarizing is this little piece here on the bottom. Uh, you will see that the, a piece of the nib door actually slides into this piece, allowing the door to open, and then the nib extends. Let me see if I can get a good look at this from different views. So you can see that a piece of the door goes in there, 
and then the nib extends. And let's look at that from the side. So you can see that piece of the door slides in there and that actually opens up the door and then the nib extends. Uh, and that I feel that this piece is going to say, uh, uh, like I said, was going to be a little bit polarizing, but you can see why this little piece is necessary in order to essentially provide a place for the door mechanism to operate. The issue with that is that the middle finger of my grip tends to ride the underside of the section. And in the case of the Curados, it really uh, basically goes right on that little uh, nub. My natural grip falls right on there and it makes it rather uncomfortable. The design actually forces me to grip the pen a little bit further back than I normally would. And at that point, then the clip, which would have been out of the way for me, then kind of comes into play and I'm forced to widen my grip a little bit. While this isn't the biggest issue for me, I'm not an issue, a huge fan of the fact that the pen is actually dictating my grip for me through various obstacles and barriers. Uh, I can imagine many users will have an issue with this as well. While it's nice that if you don't like the clip, you can remove it, uh, but you can't remove this protrusion right here. And that I feel that it's going to be the main thing that you're going to hear folks bemoan about this pen. The Curados does have a fair amount of girth to it. Uh, the the non-traditional section reminds me of the Lamy Dialog 3, which has a, a polarizing section itself. Okay, now it's time to take a look at the guts of this pen. Uh, there is a lot going on here. To begin with, as a reminder, this is how you remove the converter and nib from the vanishing point. You just open it up, and pull it right out. Uh, the only thing you need to be careful of is making sure that this little nub right here is lined up with that little trough when you're putting it back in and you are good to go. Pretty simple. Now let's take a look at the Curados. To begin with, I currently have a cartridge loaded in this pen. Platinum utilizes proprietary cartridges and converters, so keep that in mind. A cartridge is included, and when these pens begin shipping in the US, there will also be a platinum branded converter included as well. I'm not aware of what other markets will be doing, but Platinum USA is including silver colored converters, which is nice. Now, take a look at this. There is a trough here in the shape of the letter J. In order to remove the section for inking or to change the cartridge, you need to depress this end until the little nub arrives at the intersection of the trough. Then you twist it until it reaches the other side and then you pull it out to remove the nib unit. It takes a bit of getting used to, but once you have the hang of it, it operates well. Uh, if necessary, this uh, very, rather large spring can remove, be removed as well. Now, there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to disassembling this pen, and while I generally ignore the user guide that accompanies pens, as I mentioned earlier, I'll say that this one contains some vital information to help you better understand how to re-ink the pen and take it apart. Now, the first time that I actually took this pen apart, I did experience some issues. I had inserted the nib back in an incorrect orientation and the nib unit got stuck in the door mechanism. And when I activated the knock to see if it worked, it actually popped this entire front portion off of the pen. It took me quite some time to get it back together again and operating correctly. I actually felt like I earned three credits towards a degree in mechanical engineering getting the pen back together again. Uh, it was an easy mistake to make so I can imagine the first time users are inking up this pen there could be some frustration. Uh, for some folks it will go just fine but then other folks might feel that the process is a bit much and as I said there's a lot going on here but I feel that once you get the hang of it it operates fairly easily. Okay let's take a look at some size comparisons. Here is the Curados. And then here it is with the Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, here it is with a Lamy Dialog 3. And then here it is with another Platinum. This is the Platinum 3776. In regard to three other pens, here it is with a Lamy All-Star, a Twisby Eco, 
And then finally, a Visconti called the Pina Farina. Now, this particular model, uh, or this particular pen, actually has another model that actually has a door that opens up. But this particular one is the lower cost model, and uh, this one does not have the retractable nib. But that's what it looks like in comparison to the Curadas. Here we go with the writing sample for the Platinum. Curdas. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using today is Platinum Blue. Uh, and in regard to some flex. Uh, I do say that this nib is very pleasant. Um, it's not buttery smooth, but um, I do say it is on a bit on the smooth side and has just a decent amount of what I'll call good feedback. Uh, in regard to ink flow, I feel it is a little bit on the dry side. And in regard to reverse writing, Uh, it does do a good job of putting down an extra fine line in regard to the rest of the writing sample. In regard to some fast writing, It has no issues in keeping up. The retail price of the Platinum Curados will be $80, which is just about half of what the Pilot Vanishing Point sells for. But is it half the pen? While there's a lot to like about the Curados, it's not without its faults. There were some curious design choices made with this pen, mainly the long travel required to operate the knock the trapdoor mechanism protruding through the exterior of the pen and the accompanying housing, as well as the complexity of the disassembly and the nub on top of the barrel when the clip is removed. There's a lot of things to pick on in this pen, but in spite of these issues, I've enjoyed using it. Uh, I find the stainless steel nib to be very enjoyable. Uh, I do care for the translucent material and being able to see the unique inner workings of this pen. Uh, I do like the fact that when the door opens, the nib doesn't actually push the door open. The door opens and then the nib comes out, as opposed to on the vanishing point where the nib unit is actually pushing the door open. And overall, I feel that this pen does have a fair amount of cool factor. While I feel that there are areas for improvement, I feel this pen is very attractive at the $80 price point. At half of the price of a vanishing point, do I foresee the Curados being a vanishing point killer? No, I don't. I think the vanishing point has too much going for it, and at twice the price is still a decent value in its own right. But I appreciate Platinum's effort here. I just wish that they could have gone through maybe a bit more market testing prior to making some of the design decisions final. Who knows, maybe the Curados 2.0 will address these issues and be an amazing pen. But in the meantime, uh, this is a pen that I will enjoy, and I do plan on picking one up for myself when they finally become available, which I hope is sooner rather than later. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Lemur Inc. for providing this pen on loan for review. I will put a link in the notes below to where you can see this Curados on their site. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.